Hey, everybody. It's the Urban Wall Street Project. Once again, I'm your host, Earl Christian III. You know what it is. Here we are on location in Midtown Manhattan at the McGraw-Hill Building. We're about to go up to Business Week Magazine and talk to one of the top brass, Mr. John Byrne, about Business Week Magazine, his life as a journalist, and get some inside information and inside scoop on what he suggests you do and how you prepare yourself for this gaming industry. A lot of people want to be journalists. A lot of people want to be writers. But sometimes it's good to have some inside information. So I'm hopeful that you pay attention, hopefully learn some things, and we're going to see how it goes down. Right? Let's go talk to him. Good afternoon, my people. Welcome to another episode of the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III, of course. Today I'm bringing you some dynamic information. Uh, we're located right now in Midtown Manhattan, on location in the offices of Business Week magazine in the McGraw-Hill building. So you're probably wondering, what are you doing in the McGraw-Hill building with Business Week? Well, this is for my aspiring journalists who feel that journalism is what they want to do. It's in their blood. They have a strong passion for it. And we want to make sure they get the right information, some good information, some good advice and suggestions from a veteran who's been doing it, well-established uh, with this international giant of a magazine. Um, and he's doing bigger things, and he's got so many other uh, you know, things on the horizon. But we're going to talk to him. He's a writer, um, extraordinaire, and you're going to hear from him yourself. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce a, definitely a gentleman who watched me grow from a young age, Mr. John Byrne. John Byrne, how are you, sir? Hey, Earl. Good to see you. Good to see you, John. Good you to see you. You started here. Yes, I did. You were walking these halls? Yes, yes, right? How young, how young were you? I was uh, 17, fresh out of high school. Wow. Fresh out of high school, you know. So it was definitely a beautiful opportunity and, and a big thing to be 17 years old working with Business Week magazine. And, but I felt I, I handled it well, and I guess it prepared me for where I am today. So it's a good-looking cool. situation. Um, but how have you been otherwise? How have you been? I've been good. I've been doing a lot of fun stuff. Uh -huh. You know, I'm working on the web right now, on right. the online operation. Okay. And that's a lot of fun. You know, I've done uh, a lot of different things. I mean, I've done eight books. Right. Some of them are up there. I see them. I see them. Uh, when I was here before as a writer, I did 57 cover stories, wow. which is a record. That's right. Uh, I was the editor-in-chief of Fast Company, which is a monthly business magazine. Okay. Uh, in between, then I came back. Right. I worked in London for three years, which is really cool. I worked in Washington, D.C., which I loved um, for a little over four years. And uh, and I came up, you know, in a city in uh, New Jersey, Patterson, mm -hmm. um, tough city. Definitely. Um, neither of my parents were college educated. They both worked in uh, factories. Um, my dad would come home every night. His feet dyed a different color because wow. he worked in a dye house. Some nights his feet would be brown, some orange, sometimes blue. Mm -hmm. It was a big mystery to me when I was right, a kid. Right, <laughs> That's cool. That's amazing. So I know, like, I started with Business Week. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give away any of our, our ages here. <laughs> I haven't started for a while, but I know you've been. You've definitely been a, a main, a main contributing force to the magazine for, we'll say, over a decade. You know, we were like that because ten years is a good luck, but we know it's been a little longer. But it's all right. But I want to ask you, uh, John, because it's really important. Um, you know, a lot of times people don't know exactly what they want to do, and they come to epiphanies or realizations. Yeah. When did you realize, John, that writing, journalism, that's where you wanted to be? I was lucky. You know, I, I figured this out early, and here's how I figured it out. I loved music. I loved rock music. And the one thing I wanted to do when I went to college, and listen, I, w I applied to one college. Mm. I wasn't sure I wanted to go. Uh, I was lucky I got in. It was a state college in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. It was 250 bucks a semester for tuition, wow. and I got in. I went. Uh, it was better than going to Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, oh, and um, and then I loved it. And I was a lousy student. Let me just say, okay, I hated school so much. I played sick every other week. Wow. And uh, I remember I was a horrible speller. Mm -hmm. I mean, I couldn't spell for anything when I was in the fourth and fifth grade. Uh, so it wasn't like. I was his genius, right. or I was even destined to become a writer. Okay. Uh, I knew no writers. I had no role models, uh, but I loved music uh, and popular music that was hot at the time. And so when I went to college, what I wanted to be is the rock critic for my college newspaper. Hmm. So I started writing reviews. I started going to concerts. I started interviewing rock stars who would come through, uh, and I'd meet them in the motel and, and talk to them for two hours after their show at the college and stuff like that. So this is something you did because you loved it, I not loved because it. you were getting paid, Absolutely. because you loved I it. I loved it. And, and you know what? 
if I, if I could be a great musician, I probably wouldn't have wanted to write about it. I probably would have I would have wanted to do it. Right. right? Uh, I played drums. I studied drums. I was in a high school band. Um, but I wasn't I wasn't good enough uh, to play it all out. Okay. Um, but I wanted to be close to music because I loved it so much, and it was such a part of my life, and still is. So. I wanted. I decided I was going to write about it, and I was going to be DJ at the college radio station. Mm -hmm. um, so I did both those things, and as I wrote about uh, music, um, it kind of got tiring. In other words, I couldn't affect the way people think, right. the way people feel, right. the way people um, change their behaviors, or I couldn't do anything that I would consider to be socially useful or helpful to people. So then I started writing other stories, and uh, and I loved it because I got you know I was starting writing stories about um, crime on campus or why a student was raped okay. and interviewed a person who was raped and um, and then wrote editorials about the poor lighting and lousy security on campus. Right. I drove the president of the school crazy. Okay, <laughs> I can imagine. He absolutely was crazy. He was writing about everything <laughs> that the university does not want to be exposed. Let me you, just talk about you it. Bet, you better believe it. And, and not only writing about it, but never letting go. Right. You know, always writing and writing and writing. The next story, the next story, the next story. I mean, most most people are journalists. They're reformers at heart, really. Oh, okay. And uh, and I loved it, and I sort of got into it, and then then that became my passion. Um, but it was music, my interest in music, my love for music, that got me into it to, in the first place. And I had long hair down to my uh, shoulder, <laughs> right? And, right. Know, just just all the same old thing. Of, uh, rocker looking, uh, Woodstock appearance. Yeah, exactly. It was all good. Well, you know, as, like I said, well, as a veteran, you know, what I'm saying definitely a veteran and, and a mogul in your own. Um, for the young people, John, real simple, what constitutes, in your opinion, good journalism? You know, Earl, I've had one big goal all my life in journalism, and that's to capture the drama of life. Right? Mm -hmm. I want uh, to make you think differently, but more importantly, I want to move you. Mm -hmm. I want you to feel something when, you, when I write something and you read it. I want you to feel something that makes you want to change or do something different. I want you to feel it emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of business writing it, it is, it is about thinking and intellect, but I think that business is one of the great dramas in life. Definitely. And you draw out these incredible characters, some of them egomaniacs, right, right. some of them fools, some of them brilliant people. Sure. Uh, and you make them come alive in a story in a way that makes you feel something because then that's when you remember it and that's when right. it really affects you. Right. And that's always been the goal of, of uh, my own. I mean, I think that that's an ingredient in, every, in really good journalism. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that's memorable. It's not something that just fills up a magazine or a newspaper or a space. Um, it's something that has an effect on people. And it's an insight. Uh, people haven't seen it before. It's different. And in many cases, what business journalism does, it allows a lot of people who are not in the room to be in the room. Right. And I kind of like the whole notion of that, the transparency of that. The opening up of the curtain, right? To see what's going on behind. True, true, very true. I like that. I like that, and that's amazing. And it's so important um, that you touch on a lot of different um, pointers. Um, and, and that's important. You got to know what drives you and what and what your goal is. I want to do this because I have a particular objective and agenda that I want to see from my yeah. readers, my audience. That's important. Um, I want to ask you. Of course, you're a well-seasoned journalist, and now you're the executive editor for the online. The, 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 one last, as, the online aspect of the whole magazine, correct? Yeah, and I have been executive editor of the magazine. I'm still involved very much with the whole magazine thing. So. Right. Yeah. So, of course, you know, people are like, I want to write for Business Week. I'm sure. I remember when I worked here, you know, a lot of young people want to, you know, aspire to write for Business yeah, Week. Sure. But Business Week may not be your first job. You no. may have to do, you may have to, you know, get your chops up and get your, get your yeah, skills up fun. somewhere else. But by the time they think they're ready, it's, I'm ready for New York. I'm ready to be a business writer, a marketing writer, an investment writer for Business Week. I have to meet with uh, John Byrne. Wow, I wonder what he looks for. What is it that executive editor John Byrne looks for in young writers aspiring yeah. to work and write for Business Week? You know, I look for intellectual curiosity. Hmm. People who are really curious about life and how things happen and why they happen one way and not another way, mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're curious about people, what makes people tick and what motivates them, uh, what drives them. I'm interested in people who are naturally 
like that. Right. Uh, I'm interested in people who are smart and thoughtful. Mm -hmm. So when they hear someone say something, they just didn't hear what the person said. They heard everything the person didn't say. Mm. Sometimes the silence is more important than what people say. True. Sometimes the body language is more important than what people say. Um, and you and you got to kind of assess that out and figure mm. it out and uh, make sense of it because, you know, ultimately whatever you report, you bring back, and then it's the process of thinking about it, absorbing it, and saying, okay, what does it all mean? Right. Staying back from it. It's not about gathering stuff and throwing it out. It's about gathering stuff, letting it filter through your mind. And, and thinking about what's the really important thing, what do I think about it, and what can I say that's new and different that hasn't been said before. Mm. And all that requires you know, smart, thoughtful people. Um, I think the other thing I, you know, you look for, and you got, you mentioned it before, and it's a key word, passion. Right? Definitely, definitely. And if, you, if you're passionate about something, you're going to be good at it. And you might start off and you're not great at it, you may not even be good at it, but if you're passionate about it, you're going to be. Right. Because it's just it's going to be a natural outgrowth of your desire, your interest, your ambition, right. uh, your love for what you're doing, right. and that that is absolutely crucial. I had a job candidate in here this morning hmm. who lost her job um, in Silicon Valley working for a daily newspaper. Okay. A terrific candidate, enthusiasm like you couldn't believe. She was so passionate, she uh -huh. was out of her skin. Okay? <laughs> she was just really, really uh, <laughs> incredible. It, it, right. it was, and, and really excited okay. to talk about how she got this story or that story or how she figured out this idea to do that or how she got someone to talk who didn't want to talk um, or how she traveled to different countries. Mm -hmm. um, because, I mean, one of the wonderful things about journalism is this. It makes you a lifelong student. Truly. Now, it, this may seem odd because I just told you I hated school, okay? <laughs> right. And I wasn't a very good student. Um, so maybe I'm kind of making up for it after all these years, right. um, working in this field because everyone you go to, you're learning from. Right. And, you know, you can ask the most embarrassing questions. Mm -hmm. There are no stupid questions in journalism. Thank you. Can you okay. repeat that question one more time for my young folks out there who, who yeah. don't know John? Say it again. Yeah. Don't ever be afraid to ask some any question Thank you. or say anything, you know, because what people admire is confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, if you shy away from it, you're afraid because you're thinking, oh, the guy's going to think I'm a fool. No, you're the fool because you got you got to lay it out there because here's what happens if you don't. You can make huge mistakes and you can lose big opportunities mm -hmm. if you don't ask questions that may seem obvious. But a lot of times, you know, the most obvious questions get you the least obvious answers. Now, that le that's a perfect lead-up to my next question, because I wanted to say, looking back, you know, at your career, the amazing as it was, there's always those times where, like, wow, I, w I would have probably done this differently. Is there one particular experience that you can recall where you may have handled it differently? Even though, I mean, things might have turned out, but if I had a chance to do that situation again, I may have handled that a little bit differently. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I started out, uh, I was a pretty shy guy. Okay, and um, there are a lot of people in this profession who they get into it because by asking questions, I don't have to have a conversation with you, right? Right. So that makes me outgoing all of a sudden. So there are a lot of shy people who come into the field of journalism. Here's the point I want to make about that. Um, that that will hold you back. And and when I think about some of the early mistakes that I made, um, it. it had to do with about not asking certain questions that I should have asked mm -hmm. and then coming back and having to write a story and knowing that I didn't have what I needed to, to write it right because uh, I held back yeah. uh, not anymore not I mean, anymore right no not for a long time <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure and I don't even recall that but then I was younger it's gonna happen you said not, not uh. even while I've done it that's a good situation um so, John, you know, whatever we do, you know, I'm going to do television, you're in journalism. And we'll have, you know, we look back and we have our, our worst moments. We have our finest moments. I always like to accentuate the positive and happy times. So, if, if you will, tell me one of your most fondest uh, memories, one of your most fondest journalistic experiences, John. I'll tell you what it has to do with. Uh, a book. Okay. Because here, here's, the, here's the thing about a book, and, and, and this is a wonderful, it's a different form of journalism. Um, I, I don't write fiction, but I've written a lot of nonfiction. But after you work so hard, you've interviewed hundreds of people, um, you've worked on this for years. In one case, it was five years I worked on a book. And uh, it's the day you can walk into a bookstore 
and see your book on the shelf yeah. with your name on it. And you know what? Sure. Even if no one wants to buy it, it feels awfully good. <laughs> That's it. it does feel good. And I, and I can echo that because I know how it feels when I you know, sit back and I yeah. watch one of my podcasts. Yeah. And even if no one else is watching, yeah. it just feels good to see yeah. that accomplishment that you know, That's it. And it's tangible, you know? Right. Okay, you, you listen to a podcast, you view a video that you've done online, you go into a library and you see a book on the shelf, you see someone reading the story that you wrote in the magazine while you're sitting behind them in a train or plane or on a bus. And there's a special feeling of pride and accomplishment that you get from that that's irreplaceable. I, I know that's the truth. I yeah. know that's the truth. Um, so with that said, I want to say to my, to my young viewers, so now we got some journalism students out there, and you want to know, well, now we're sitting here right in the offices. I'm in the crux, so I'm gonna, hopefully I'm going to ask a question that you would ask. But here's one I think is very important. Now we got inspiring young people. I want to be a journalist. I want to do this. We know you have to have drive. You know you have to have passion. But outside of that, a certain degree of worth at work ethic individuals should have. What suggestions would you give to a student or a young person that might not have it? Say, if you're ready for this, these are some ways you need to prepare yourself, whether it be internships, freelancing. What's some things they really should start preparing for at the high school level and in the college level, John? Yeah. Number one, you got to dream big, okay? But by dreaming big, it doesn't mean that anything is beneath you. Right. And that's the big thing to understand. You can dream big and you can realize some very big ambitions, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get it right away. So that means you've got to do a lot of um, scut work a lot of times. You know, my first job in journalism, I wrote obituaries. I kid you not. Wow. I answered the phone on a city desk at a daily newspaper. Uh, I had to call up funeral directors. <laughs> I had to write obituaries. I had to go and strip the wires, you know, Associated Press wires. Right, right. I had to go for steak sandwiches for the for the editors. Wow. And pick up pizza for them, okay? Uh -huh. <laughs> Get them their coffee. That was my first job. Okay. Two dollars and fifty cents an hour. Wow. Okay? And you know what? I went to work every day after school and I said to myself, I hope someone died today who was important enough that I could write the obituary and get a byline, okay? <laughs> but, I, but I hope the guy wasn't so important right, that a, report, right. a real reporter right. wouldn't steal it from me. For sure, okay? for sure, definitely. <laughs> and, I, and then I, I wrote for a bunch of, like, these freebie papers. Okay. Where they were paying me 25 cents for every inch of copy they published. Wow. And I'd go to these boring meetings at the Board of Education and the Town Council and the Board of Assessment in these uh, little towns here and there uh, and do those stories. Uh, it's just, you know, you do what you got to do uh, to get your feet wet. Internships, of course, okay? Um, the better the place you can get an internship, the better it's going to be for you. Right. But get in, uh, again, nothing is ever beneath you. Right. You can, because you have, if you allow that attitude to hold you back, to, to, to keep you from your dream, mm -hmm. Forget it. So you're, very, you're never going to make it. So it's very important. Okay. I'm going to let you continue, but I just wanted to interject. It's dignity in all work, no matter where you have to begin. Remember, like he said, there's nothing below you. Now, this establishment telling you, I did it for $2.50 because there was a vision, there was a dream, there was a passion for the bigger picture. So never think you're selling yourself short because you never, never know what that opportunity and that learning experience is going to deliver for you. Yeah, because the job is more than the money, mm -hmm. a job is more than even what you're doing, right? Right. The, the job is the learning, the personal growth, uh, getting in with people who you can, uh, will be your role models or your mentors or people who are going to help you mm -hmm. or you're going to be your friends. Uh, it's, it's more than just the one thing you may be thinking about at the moment. It's not the 250 an hour. It's not the 25 cents an inch. Right. It's not, oh, man, i got to go to this boring meeting and try to make this interesting for people. Right. How, how, this, this is a killer, right? right. I want to write the big story, the cool stuff. No, everything is a learning opportunity, and everything, you know, will come back to you mm -hmm. in ways you never can imagine. Because you might find in the scut job, the job that you hate the most, the one person who believes in you, who backs you, who supports you, who teaches you, who makes you who you are. And you, you, so everything, there's always a possibility for a magic opportunity, and you can't ignore it. Excellent. My students, my brothers, my sisters, my people out here in the struggle, my people in college, you want to get it. I'm hopeful that you've learned some things. I'm hopeful you paid attention because Mr. John Byrne has surely uh, laced us with a plethora of information and knowledge that will surely get you to the places in journalism or actually any parts of um, aspects of your life you want to be. 
It's about being knowing who you are. It's about being confident. It's about having passion. It's about being committed. It's about not feeling you're selling, feeling as if you're selling yourself short. It's about knowing what you want and then surrounding yourself with the people that you want to be around and the things you want to do. I definitely want to thank Mr. John Byrne for the opportunity to talk. I'm going to share some information and some insight on the journalistic arena for, for my viewers. And I'm going to ask him to give one final word of advice and suggestion for all you will be aspiring journalists. So listen closely because you may not get this again. Mr. John Byrne. Never give up. Never give up on your dream. You know, there are going to be people out there who are going to uh, frustrate you. Uh, there are going to be situations that are going to be difficult for you. Uh, you, sometimes you could even give up on yourself, um, but you got to get over it. You got to keep moving forward. And and if you do, and look, I've, I've got have good friends. They went to college. Um, they didn't pursue the dream. They didn't work hard enough for it. Uh, they gave up too quick. I'd I'd work for nothing. I swear to God, I'd work for nothing to do what I really want to do. Mm -hmm. Because here's what I know: um, working for nothing. No one, will, no one will take you up on that. Right. Say, you go into any place and you say, you know, I'll work for you for free. I want to work here so bad. And I'll do anything. I'll clean the toilets. I know a guy who got a law degree in the baddest way. He wanted to work for Major League Baseball. Baseball, he loved. He couldn't play it. He wanted to work for it. What he did, he, he got a job at Major League Baseball telling him that he would clean the toilets. Of course he's not going to clean the toilets, right? Right. You go and you say, I'll work for free for you. No one's going to take you up on that. They're going to pay you. Right. But they're going to admire you, and they're going to remember you, and it's going to open the door. Don't give up, ever. That's been the theme of the Urban Wall Street Project. Never give up. Stay committed. Stay passionate. Because it can happen. Don't always look for the dollar. Sometimes you will get that dollar. But when you give, you give of yourself more, and you do it because you love it and not because you're getting paid, the dollar reward or the monetary reward forthcoming might be so much greater than what you could initially hope for. You've been watching the Urban Wall Street Project. I'm your host, Earl Christian III. I hope you've enjoyed this segment. hope you learned something and been entertained. Till next time, peace and keep your head up. Hey, thank you. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs>
appreciation for creative people and talented people right. and a lot of artists and music. You know, I've just been blessed. It's been a good ride. Um, you know, the music business right now is kind of like on an up and down. Right, right. Probably at one of its low points uh, right. after the boom of the CD business and now with things transitioning to pretty much a digital or mobile right, format. Right. Um, you know, the business isn't as, as, as being as prosperous as it has been in the past, but there's still a lot of creative and talented artists out there. Definitely. So, you know, at the end of the day, I like to believe it's all about the music. And, um, you know, as business people, eventually we'll work it out and get the business part worked out. Most definitely, most definitely. So, you know, like you said, you've been doing, uh, you've been an attorney for 14 years, been doing entertainment attorney, uh, primary focus for the past 10. Tell me when your passion, because one of the things that we talk about is passion, and mm -hmm. I want you to let them know how important the passion is. When did you realize that becoming an entertainment attorney is where Matthew Middleton needed to be? Well, when I was, I remember the first time I thought about being a lawyer, when it crossed my mind, I was in junior high school. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was interesting, and I'll never forget this, because I, I was in junior high school um, in the South Bronx, and uh, guidance counselor was just asking me, what do you want to do when you grow up? You know, and I just thought, right. you know, be a lawyer, because, you know, from what I knew on TV, you know, right. lawyers were well off. They paid, they were always in the courtroom, you know, right, right. representing people, giving people laws. So I just said, you know, I want to be a lawyer. And the guidance counselor, like, immediately, like, like, Almost paid it no mind, like wow. uh, you know, like almost shut it down. I never forget him. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't despise him at all because it kind of really inspired me. His name was Mr. Calvin. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Mr. 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 C. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> IS 149. Right. Um, but it kind of inspired me.